Hello everyone. Do you think we are alone in the universe? Many people today think that humanity is not ready for contact with aliens. As soon as we put aside our optimistic approach to the subject and turn to a scientific perspective, we can all achieve such a result. So our search for intelligent life in space may be fruitless. However, we still have a lot to discover. So, what kind of mysteries are actually hiding behind the cosmic silence of space, or will we really not be able to contact aliens? After spending many years investigating the possibility of us coming into contact with extraterrestrials, scientists have come to surprising conclusions. Let's imagine that an alien civilization is at the same technological level as us and that their spacecraft fly at the same speeds as ours. It turns out that it would take approximately 1 billion years for intelligent life at this level to spread to a galaxy similar to the Milky Way. And this shows a very fast spread on a galactic scale. Well, if this is the case, why don't we see signs of this when we examine galaxies? To answer this question, we will first need to look at the sister house scale. Modern scientists use this scale to measure the potential of living things to colonize the space around them and the likelihood of contact with other life forms. And in fact, scale explains why we can't find evidence of alien life. Sister House suggested that a civilization's level of technological advancement can be measured by how efficiently it uses its energy resources. On this scale, Type 1 civilizations could learn to harvest the full energy radiated from their parent star on their home planet. Such a civilization is likely ready for interplanetary travel and will at some point succeed in colonizing the entire solar system. As humans, we can only use less than 0.1% of our planet's energy potential. So yes, we still haven't reached the Type 1 civilization level. According to this scale, civilizations that have reached the Type 2 level can dominate not only the energy on their own planets but also any energy they can obtain from their star systems. To find such a civilization, scientists are searching for the Dyson Sphere, a hypothetical structure that would allow the civilization to capture all the energy of a star. On the other hand, this advanced civilization will also have the ability to travel between stars. This will mean colonizing their own galaxy and even controlling the energy of the entire universe, of course, this civilization will not only control the energy they collect, but they will also be able to use it to make changes to planets. At this point, we can think that it would not be very peaceful for a Type 3 civilization to communicate with lower-level civilizations. When we consider our capacity to transmit and receive signals in space, we realize that the visibility of Earth's energy activities, namely radio signals, lasers, and electrical activities, is very limited, all these activities can be seen from a distance of up to 4 light years. And this effect can theoretically only be heard by our immediate neighbors who have reached the same level of development as us. Type 2 civilizations can detect us from much further away. On the other hand, such a civilization can easily hide itself from us due to the great distance between them. So much so that we have been sending various signals into space for 60 years and are constantly scanning space to detect artificial signals. But we still haven't found anything. The Great Silence Paradox was first put forward by legendary physicist Enrico Fermi during a conversation with his colleagues. During this conversation, Fermi raised a seemingly simple question, where are the aliens and why haven't they come to visit us yet? In fact, considering the level of development of our civilization, the answer to this question was quite obvious. Why would these beings visit us? Civilizations that can produce the logistics required for interstellar travel must reach at least Type 2, and we are of no importance to beings at this level. So think about it, would it make sense for us, as humanity, to try to communicate with ants? Or could an ant understand that a human was trying to communicate with it? After all, compared to ants, humanity stands out as technologically advanced creatures that have taken over an entire planet. Not to mention the rate at which we use our planet's energy resources, other civilizations, like us, that have not yet reached the first type, are limited to their own planets and star systems. So it is unlikely that such beings will visit the world because they are probably dealing with problems such as hunger and war, just like us. On the other hand, we can assume that Type 1 civilizations also have major problems to deal with. So, is it actually possible for there to be a civilization that has overcome these problems and decided to engage in space travel? Data presented by scientists show that we may have a surprisingly large number of neighbors. So when we look at the sky, we can see that there are many potential habitable planets. 
But did you know that all the planets we can see are only 1% of the Milky Way? Considering that only 1% of these planets host intelligent life, we conclude that there may be approximately 100,000 life-filled planets in our galaxy alone. But remember, we still haven't discovered anything about such a civilization. If we return to the Fermi paradox, we can see that there are hundreds of scientific theories trying to explain the great silence within the scope of this idea. Let's examine the most interesting of these theories, first of all, the reason there are no traces of type 2 or type 3 civilizations is because such civilizations do not exist. In fact, scientific analysis shows that there may be thousands of civilizations in our galaxy alone. Therefore, researchers hypothesize that there is a factor standing in the way of the development of a hypothetical civilization. This factor is called the Big Filter. This theory suggests that life faces an insurmountable obstacle after reaching a certain level of development. However, scientists do not know what this filter might be. So the possibilities are only limited by our imagination. In the scenario where this theory is true, we, as humanity, will be a unique life form that has managed to overcome the barrier of the Great Filter. This is a future in which we have reached a level that is very difficult to reach, therefore, we must say that we are talking about a very low probability. In such a case, the cosmic silence would result from the moment when hypothetical civilizations would not have been able to pass the Great Filter. And that means there is no one we can contact. In the second scenario, Jesus shows that we will be the first among our neighbors to reach this level. This is because the conditions necessary for intelligent life to exist have occurred relatively recently. So, in this version, humanity is at the vanguard of progress. Namely, humanity was in the right place at the right time to become one of the first intelligent civilizations. On the other hand, according to this theory, we have plenty of time to reach the Type 2 or Type 3 civilization level. It also proves why we are alone in this universe. Since we have progressed faster than other organic lifeforms since the Big Bang, it may be normal to discover no other lifeforms in the universe. Now let's take a look at the third, more pessimistic theory offered by scientists and think about it. Would life be as diverse as it is today if we were not the first beings to reach our current level of advancement in this rare series of cosmic events, and if the Great Filter were before us? Perhaps this filter was only preventing life from evolving into a Type 1 civilization, and it is unlikely that humanity would be an exception. Scientists who advocated the third hypothesis believed that cosmic silence was a good thing for us. After all, the existence of complex life on Mars, the Moon, or elsewhere could prove the existence of the Great Filter. However, there is also an opposing perspective. According to this theory, there are Type 2 and Type 3 civilizations in the universe and there is no reason why these civilizations cannot be discovered. The idea is mainly based on the fact that our search is very limited. After all, we are investigating a region that is only 100 light years away from us and represents only 1% of our galaxy. The most interesting theories that emerged in line with this scenario are as follows. Since our galaxy was colonized a long time ago, it is quite normal that we are not aware of other beings because they are so far away from us. We can see a similar situation even in world history. Native Americans living in remote parts of the continent colonized North America only becoming aware of the existence of their neighbors a few years after more advanced Europeans arrived on the continent. Jesus, everything changed. As a result, we may be too primitive to understand some important signals in space. Or maybe there are other places we need to focus. On the other hand, the fact that our minds may be very different from those of other lifeforms may make our attempts at contact meaningless. Another interesting hypothesis is the cosmic zoo theory, which proposes that we are surrounded by a densely populated galaxy. Our world, in this theory, is likened to a world wildlife reserve. Human visits or animal contact are not allowed in wildlife reserves around the world. In this context, there may be a planet on Earth that advanced beings in the universe have been able to track but have not been able to contact. However, none of the theories put forward to explain this paradox are supported by solid evidence or ideas. Because we still know very little about space. And such questions do not yet mean that people have given up on the idea of aliens. For example, there are currently two projects that have spent decades searching for extraterrestrial life and communicating with possible intelligent civilizations. These are SETI and METI projects. The foundations of these two projects are based on the Drake Equation, a mathematical formula that suggests that it is possible to accurately calculate the number of habitable planets and, more importantly, their potential locations. And it is stated that the next step at this point is to use this information to reach the detected planets. According to this equation, our galaxy may host between 8 and 2,900 intelligent life systems. So much so that as science advances and our knowledge about our galaxy increases, calculations become more precise. 
Additionally, it is thought that there are 36 other sister worlds with us in the Milky Way galaxy. The SETI project began in 1984, and initially, the project focused on scanning our immediate environment to look for radio signals from potential neighbors. However, no signal was found in the surrounding area. Today, the European Space Telescope is expected to bring positive results. This telescope can transmit information about the precise positions of all the stars in our galaxy and provide an accurate assessment of the potential of star systems. Thanks to this project, detailed analyses of various star systems began to be carried out within the scope of the SETI project. So right now we can only send signals to systems that are most likely to have intelligent life, so will we get any answers? The answer to this is both yes and no. Some of the systems we are currently investigating are so distant that any response from them would take more than 3,600 years to reach Earth. On the other hand, METI's mission is also very important. Within the scope of this project, potential messages from space are examined and messages are sent to space in the same way. Eight message-containing vehicles have been sent into space so far. Two of these are the messages contained in the Voyager probe's famous golden records and the radio signals directed to stars such as Gliese 581, one of the closest solar-type stars. But we haven't received an answer yet and it doesn't actually seem possible. But maybe our grandchildren will get these answers. If we summarize all these theories and studies, we can say that the silence of the universe is an absolutely normal thing. Additionally, the source of all this uncertainty may be that we are not developed enough to make contact with possible civilizations around us, or that the universe is not yet ready for such contact. So which of these scenarios makes sense to you? Are humanity a unique species, or have we been controlled by super-advanced civilizations for thousands of years? We are waiting for your comments. See you in a new video, goodbye.